No problem. <laughs> and, hey, listen. Listen. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Recording. All right. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, those of you that are joining us tonight, I do want to thank you. I am live on all of my platforms, including our website. I do apologize for all of the uh, amateur hour mistakes that I had to getting started today because it was a lot of my, my issues. But nevertheless, we are here and we are uh, ready to get started with our study tonight. How are you gentlemen doing tonight? Blessed. I, I, I am feeling uh, phenomenal. Yeah, I'm ready to get at it. I'm ready to get it cracking. Well, I've been, I've, been, I've been thinking all week, excited all week about this book that we are going to talk about and deal with tonight uh, uh, called The Book of Jubilees. And um, and uh, do you guys have any thoughts or anything before we get started on it? No, I have not. I did, uh Let's roll, man. Let's roll. All right. All right. I want to hear. All right. So now I'm going to share my screen here. Let me see if I can do this with no problems again. Uh, I just did share my screen. So now let me get down here and find myself for now. See, something happened when I did that. Find myself here. I don't know about y'all, but I got that old people cold going on right now. I was I just was going through it a minute ago, but I'm fine Ooh. now. I'm in a hoodie with a shirt under it. <laughs> Can you guys see the sapper? We cannot see the sapper. You're sharing right now your um your um your uh home screen or your dashboard. Your you're not uh I would stop your shared and go back and look for the the uh browser with the sapper in it. Or you may have to even read. Where, where do you find the browser with the sephir in it from Zoom? It's so down. It, 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 so what you got to do is take your view that you got up in Zoom and exit full screen. It'll minimize your full screen. Then you'll be able to see those other tabs underneath there once you exit full screen. Okay, I've done that. So now, um, share my screen now. Yeah, go ahead and try to share your screen. And well, you still got to find the browser where you're open your suffer. Oh, share screen options. Mm -hmm. You should be sharing the suffer, the one, the browser that has the suffer up in it. It should be multiple browsers. Any browser you got open, it should show that when you go share screen. And then you want to select the one where your suffer is open. You may have to scroll down some, but you should see Google Chrome open, uh, Internet Explorer, whatever you got on your dashboard. All as soon as I hit, as soon as I hit, as soon as I hit share screen, it just shares my screen, and that's what comes up. I'm gonna have to take it from off my other side here and just bring it back over there um, that way, and then do it like this. All right, can you see it now? Yes, I can see the sephir now. Okay. All right. Let me minimize this so I can get this thing done. And we might as well both start our recordings over so we ain't got this before the recording. Or you live. You live. Okay. Or you're live everywhere already. I am yeah, yeah. live. Okay. No worries. I am. I you're am, live. but I'm good now. I'm ready and I'm already here. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> We, yep, let's go. Okay, all right. So we are going to get with the Book of Jubilees, and I'm I'm covering the first three chapters. Is that right, gentlemen? Yes, sir. All right, I am in there right now, and let's go. Verse one. And it came to pass in the first year of the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt in the third month on the sixteenth day of the month um, that Yahuwah spoke to Moses saying, come up to me on the mount and I will give you two sapphire stones of the Torah and of the commandment, which I have written that you may teach them. And Moses went up into the mount of Yahuwah 
and the glory of Yahuwah abode on Mount Sinai, and a cloud overshadowed it six days. Um, just trying to move this thing out of the way. Um, and he called to Moses on the seventh day out of the midst of the cloud, and the appearance of the glory of Yahuwah was like a flying, flaming fire on the top of the mountain. And Moses was on the days and forty nights, taught him and later history of the division of the Torah. of testimony. He said, which I shall speak to you on this mount and write them in a sephir in order that their generations may see how I have not forsaken them for all the evil which they have wrought in transgressing the covenant which I established between me and you for their generations this day on Mount Sinai. And thus it will come to pass when all these things come upon them that they will. Before I bring them into the land of which I swore to their fathers to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, Unto your seed will I give a land flowing with milk and honey, and they will eat and be satisfied, and they will turn to strange gods, Elohim, to Elohim which cannot deliver them from out of their tribulation. And this witness shall be heard for a witness against them. For they will forget all of my commandments, even all that I command them. And they will walk after the other nations and after their uncleanliness and after their shame and will serve their gods. And these will prove unto them an offense and a tribulation and an affliction and a snare. Is there anything you all would like to add? Because I wanted to say something real quick here. Nope, do you, brother? Um, so you got uh, uh, we've been through this before, but would you guys agree that this is obviously Moses getting told the future of the children of Israel and what was going to transpire with them when before they came out of Egypt? Could we agree on that? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, he was telling okay. them that there was going to be obviously Deuteronomy 20, you know. Are you guys still there? Everything cut out. Yeah, I didn't hear anything. I hear my internet is choppy, period. Yeah, so, so it, you're this character. Because I, I, I reset mine right before Bible study. Yeah, you present, you're fine. Okay. And many will perish and they will be taken captive and will fall into the hands of the enemy because they have forsaken my ordinances and my commandments and the feast of my covenant, my Sabbath, my holy place, which I have sanctified for myself in their midst. And my tabernacle and my sanctuary, which I have sanctified for myself in the midst of the land, that I should set my name upon it and that it should dwell there. And they will make to them high places and Asherah poles. That's very, <laughs> wow, that's something that today happens to be that day that they call Easter Estar, you know, that we studied out. And here, here we are where he's talking about a sure poles. I just wanted to add that, but a sure poles and graven images, and they will worship each his own graven image so as to go astray. And they will sacrifice their children to devils and to all the works of the era of their hearts. And I will send witnesses unto them that they may witness against them, but they will not hear. And they will kill the witnesses also, and they will persecute those who seek the Torah, 
They will abrogate and change everything so as to work evil before my eyes. And I will hide my face from them, and I will deliver them into the hand of the other nations for captivity and for a prey and for devouring. And I will remove them from the midst of the land, and I will scatter them amongst the other nations. And they will forget all my Torah and all my commandments and all my judgments. They will go astray as to new moons and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees and ordinances. And after this, they will turn to me from amongst the other nations with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their strength. And I will gather them from amongst all the other nations, and they will seek me. So that shall be found of them when they seek me with all their heart and with all their soul. And I will disclose to them abounding peace with righteousness, and I will remove them the plant of, um, of, of uprightness. With all my heart, with all my soul, they shall be for a blessing and not for a curse, and they shall be the head and not the tail. And I will build my sanctuary in their midst, and I will tabernacle with them, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people in truth and righteousness. And I will not forsake them nor fail them, for I am Yahuwah, Elohim. And Moses fell on his face and prayed and said, Oh, Yahuwah, do not forsake your people and your inheritance so that they should wander in the error of their hearts and do not deliver them into the hands of their enemies, the other nations, lest they should rule over them and cause them to sin against you. Let your mercy, O Yahuwah, be lifted upon your people and create in them an upright spirit. David said that, you all. Just want to add that. <laughs> Y'all still there? Yes, sir. Okay, just want to make sure. And let not the spirit of Belial rule over them to accuse them before you and to ensnare them from All my commandments, and they will fulfill my commandments, and I will be their father, and they shall be my children. And they all shall be called children of the living Elohim, and every angel and every ruach shall know, yea, they shall know that these are my children, and that I am their father in uprightness and righteousness, and that Stop I love right there. them. Stop Ooh. right there. Stop oh, oh, oh. right there. Oh, 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 that got me. That gave me chills, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> they shall be called the children of the living Elohim. So let's pull that apart just a little. We often wonder where sons of God comes from, but here's his children. What would they be? They would be sons of the living Elohim, right? And then uh, it goes another step further to say that every angel and every spirit shall know. Now, we go back to that, to the people who were called by my name. It would be his children, uh, his children, Israel. But, and but, but, I am, yes, sir. But see now, but now you just shared the other day, which I shared it, I got it from you. I took it right off your page. I don't know what scripture it was in Exodus, but it wasn't it somewhere in there where he said he did not tell them his name. Yeah, until... he was El Shaddai. He was El Shaddai. So, to 
Yes. Yep. That was okay. that was an exodus. He was known to them as El Shaddai. So now you know so, why when Moses went to go get them up out of Egypt, he didn't even know what his name was. When Abraham was sacrificing, he was El Shaddai, which which really truly means uh, the the God of the mountains. Now think about it. They landed in Armenia, Mount Eret. So the Most yeah. High Yah was the God of the mountains, and so that's where you get your El Shaddai. Okay, but now, but he's not he's not referring to him as El Shaddai in this particular book. So I guess my question is, when he said that in Exodus, he. So the El Shaddai came before Yahuwah? Yeah, so Abraham wouldn't have known the Most High as, as Yahuwah. He would have known him as El Shaddai. He okay. would have known him as El Shaddai. Now, the Sefer took the liberty to change the El Shaddai's. But when you yeah. go back and look in just the, the original manuscript in the Hebrew, that's going to be an El Shaddai there. And they changed those El Shaddai's to Elohim. But El Shaddai just really encompassed the, the most high as he is the supreme being over everything. And then once he uh, he revealed his name to Moses. And yes. then Moses, when he revealed it to Moses, and that's when the Yah came into place. Now, would it be safe to say... Well, I'll let, I'll continue reading. I don't want to. I don't want to say nothing to give anything away. We're going to read it together. And we'll all see it together. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um. And so he says, and do you write? This is where I want to stop. Right after I read this particular scripture, he says, and do you write down for yourself all these words? which I declare unto you on this mountain, the first and the last, which shall come to pass in all the divisions of the days in the Torah and in the testimony and in the weeks and the jubilees unto eternity until I descend and tabernacle with them throughout eternity. I got to stop right there. That's a lot of information in that paragraph. Yes, um, it is. The first, oh, goodness. First thing I wanted to ask, well, this is where I draw the conclusion, and I don't want to say, and I'm going out there now, y'all might call me a scam and I'll take it, but I'm literally going out there with this because this is where it, I see Moses getting the instructions to write Genesis. Can you guys see that or am I seeing that wrong? No, so I think that what you're saying is correct, but it's even bigger than Genesis. And so oh, I, I think it's... We, we, oh, yeah, we, we got five books we're talking about. We're talking about Genesis, Exodus. I'm just, I get all that. We're talking you know, about the Torah and complete. Yes. But I'm talking about, is this the spot where is the where he's getting the instructions to write those books? Well, I think he's really getting the information for whatever books he tells him to write because I we both believe Moses knew more than he wrote we both we all believe that right because it says right here he gave them all from first to last Moses didn't write from first to last but he knew first from last he knew all the divisions of the days and then the most high told him all right well even though I'm giving you all of this from first to last this is what I want you to write. I see. So would it be fair to say that it was done on purpose to leave some of those holes out of Genesis, Exodus? Like we've already read, we're gonna, we've already, we haven't even gotten into the deepness of this book yet, but we're going to read some stuff that's going to literally fill in these holes. So yeah. if by what you said to me or said said is that saying that that would have been done on purpose or is that part of the scam of them removing it? Well, I think that if one man tried to write 
every single thing that the Most High told him from beginning to end, it would be thousands of chapters that Moses would have been writing, thousands of chapters. And so I believe okay. that the Most High just said, even though you know thousands of chapters worth of stuff, and I can download it to you in the blink of an eye, so you got it. I only want you to write this stuff down right here because Moses didn't give us everything, but I got to believe he was obedient and gave us exactly what the most high wanted us to know, but he had way more information at his fingertips. Got it. Got it. Okay. That's cool. All right. Fair. And he said to the angel of the presence, write for Moses. Oh, from hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm so sorry. I wanted to say one more thing. I think, it's, I think it's important to take a look. And it says in the middle of 27, it says, which shall come to pass in all the divisions of the days in the Torah and in the testimony of the weeks and the jubilees into when? Into eternity. But until who descends? Not Jesus. I. I. I, I descend and tabernacle with them throughout eternity. Yeah. No, damn Jesus. That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. No, no, no. It's, it's the most high coming back. <laughs> it's you the know? most high. That's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Y'all ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, and he said to the angel of the presence, I dug on some a study. We had to look at that later because I did some study on the angel of the presence, uh, just so you guys know. But yes, right from Moses, from the beginning of the creation till my sanctuary has been built among them for all eternity. And Yahuwah will appear to the eyes of all and all shall know that I am the Elohim of Israel the father of all the children of Jacob and king on Mount Zion for all eternity. And Zion and Jerusalem shall be holy. And the What's angel of presence who went, Hold Zion. On, nope, nope. So in the middle of 28, see the, the New Testament flower is, you'll see him coming from the east to the west. But uh -huh. that's the, no, but no, this is Yahuwah will appear that's, to the eyes of all. Oh. Yahuwah, not Jesus. Sorry. Yahuwah will appear to the eyes of all. And all shall know that I am the most high. All right, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. Let's go. No, no, sir. I, I was expecting this tonight. We, we can eat this one alive. However, we got to do it. <laughs> okay. All right. So, and the angel of the presence who went, before the camp of Israel, took the ta tables of the divisions of the years from the time of the Torah and of the testimony of the weeks of the Jubilees, according to the individual years, according to all number of the Jubilees, according to the individual years from the day of the new creation, when the heavens and the earth shall be renewed and all their creation according to the powers of heaven and according to all creation of the earth until the sanctuary of Yahuwah shall be made in Jerusalem on Mount Zion and all the luminaries be renewed for, for healing and for peace and for blessing and for all the elect of Israel and that thus it may be from that day and unto all the days of the earth. Any questions on that chapter? Or comments? No, sir. All right. Chapter two. And the angel, excuse me. And the angel of the presence spoke to Moses, according to the word of Yahweh, saying, write the complete history of the creation. This is where I'm going to stop. This is where, again, I believe that this is another verification of Moses getting instructions of what to write down. 
So when I read this several times, this is where I got that confirmation again. Is that is that fair to say that that's okay there? I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. Got it. So in six days, Yahuwah finished all his works and all he created and kept the Sabbath on the seventh day and sanctified it for all ages and appointed it as a sign for all his works. For on the first day he created the heavens which are above, above and the earth and the waters and all the spirits which serve before him, the angels of the presence and the angels of sanctification and the angels of the spirit of fire and the angels of the spirit of the winds and the angels of the spirit of the clouds and of darkness and of snow and of hail, and of hoarfrost, and the angels of the voices, and of thunder, and of lightning, and the angels of the spirits of cold, and of heat, and of winter, and of spring, and of autumn, and of summer, and of all the spirits of his creatures, which are in the heavens and on the earth. He created the abysses, and the darkness, evening and night, and the light, um, the dawn and day, which he has prepared in the knowledge of his heart. And thereupon we saw his works and praised him and lauded before him on account of all his works. For seven great works did he create on the first day. And on the second day he created the expanse in the midst of the waters. And the waters were divided on that day. Half of them went up above and half of them went down below the expanse that was in the midst of the face of the whole earth. This was the only work Yahuwah created on the second day. So I want to stop right there real fast because this is another prove all thing moment. When we're going through these books, we've got to be able to be able to verify with the 66 books that the stuff is being said is, is verifiable. And we know that when the flood came, the Most High separated the two expanses of waters and that was what happened when the flood happened. He brought those two expanses together. Is that right? That is right. Okay. And I have something to say on that. So we're so we're looking at chapter two, and we look in the second verse for it. On the second, on the first day, he created the heavens, which are above, and the earth, and the waters. This is all before the flood. This is all before we believe it to have ever have rained. But here we're talking about the spirit of rain, the spirit of snow and hail and frost and all of these other kinds of things and thunder and lightning. So it's almost, um, um, I mean, they're speaking kind of to a degree of things that haven't even happened yet. I mean, because if it, have, it hasn't yet rained until the time of Noah, you know, we're talking about these things here. We're talking well, about the thunder and the lightning and all of that kind of stuff. Well, well, because if we look right back above that, he was just mentioning those all are attributes. I think he was attributing those to the angels that are in charge of those specific things. Am I right? Yes, sir. That is that is correct. And it's almost speaking. It's 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 almost like a a, a prophecy yet fulfilled. I mean, that's kind of how I look at it because it hadn't happened yet. But the angels of those things responsible for those were made in this day. Well, take a look at I a guess. couple of things. You got a couple of things you got to look at too when you consider this text. Um, they never used the word rain. So I know you mentioned rain a couple of times, but I ne I don't recall seeing rain specifically in the text. Now, they separated the waters from above and the waters from below. Now, the waters from below, you would not consider that rain. That's not rain. It's, no, it's no. Waters from below. Now, the waters that are above the action that they do is to rain on the earth <laughs> when he releases those. And that's what we call our rain. However, though, every single thing that we see in this realm was created by the invisible realm. And so when we pull things into this third dimension, those are things that exist in fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh and higher dimensions anyway. Now, he had an opportunity to create them, but then that just lets you truly really know 
that these things are, in my personal opinion, spirits, because it says the spirit of fire, right? That burning mm -hmm. fire, that thing is alive. <laughs> That's some type of power to me, right? And then we talked before about the clouds and the darkness and then the frost and the hail. Now, maybe you're 1000%. There's just angels that control these things, but it, it, it seem it almost speaks to a higher level of spirituality for these things. And especially for the water, we know that water's alive. You know, the water, it, 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 we don't want to get too far off track, but these things are, are life, you know, and think about what we are, how, what percentage of our body is water. You know what I'm saying? Like these it's things alive. are alive, bro. Right. Right. Mind Ready? blowing. Mind blowing. Ready? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. And on the third day, he commanded the water to pass from off the face of the whole earth into one place and the dry land to appear. So the work, the earth was submerged in water. Correct. And what did he do? He commanded the water. How are you going to command an inanimate object? The water took a command from the most high. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the waters did so as he commanded them. And they retired from off the face of, uh, oh goodness, of the up face of the earth into one place outside of this expanse and the dry land appeared. Cool. On that so, day, he, I'm sorry, Kim, but uh, one more thing. So flashing oh, back no. to Genesis. So we have the, 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 the gap theory, and I know it's a couple different ways, but we know from Genesis that, you know, the dry land appeared, but there was already water there, right? And now we know that something happened, but let's continue on. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, we, uh, yeah, well, she, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> okay. yeah, we'll get there. And yeah, and on that day he created for them all the seas according to their separate separate gathering places and all the rivers and the gatherings of the waters in the mountains and on all the earth and all the lakes and all the dew of the earth and the seed which is sown and the sprouting things and the fruit bearing trees, trees of wood and the Garden of Eden, and all. These four great works Elohim created on the third day. And on the fourth day, he created the sun and the moon and the stars and set them in the expanse of heaven to give light upon all the earth and to rule over the day and the night and divide the light from the darkness. And Yahuwah appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for feasts and for years and for Sabbaths of the years and for Jubilees and for all seasons of the years. And it divides the light from dark the darkness and for prosperity that all things may prosper which shoot and grow on the earth. These three kinds he made on the fourth day. And on the fifth day, he created great sea monsters in the depths of the waters. For they were the first things of flesh that were created by his hands. The fish and everything that moves in the waters and everything that flies, the birds and all their kind. And the sun rose above them to prosper them and above everything that was on the earth, everything that shoots out of the earth, and all fruit-bearing trees and all flesh. These three kinds he created on the fifth day. And on the sixth day he created all the animals of the earth and all cattle and everything that moves on the earth. And after all this, he created a man, a man and a woman, created he them. He gave him dominion over all that is upon the earth and in the seas and over everything that flies uh, and over beasts and over cattle and over everything that moves on the earth and over the whole earth and over all this he gave him dominion. 
And these four kinds he created on the sixth day. And they were all together two and twenty kinds. I think that's important. I think that's uh -huh. important. So, okay. Species, right? So he created 22 kinds of species. And then so anything that crosses outside of those barriers of the 22 species that he created, the 22 kinds, right, mm -hmm. is truly some form of an abomination and or some form of DNA twist. And so that's when you get into the uh, uh, the offspring of the watchers and humans. That's not DNA that the Most High did. That's why them gay people at Job's place trying to get to the angels. You know, they 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 wanted to change that 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 structure of those kinds. And so that's why when you get you cross um, a, a pig with a donkey, and I don't know if people crossbreed those type things, but that's an abomination. You know, that's not mm -hmm. the way the most high meant those things to be. So if we were limited right. to those 22 kinds. Right, right. And so, um, and, and and so, and he gave us, where, 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 did I, where were we at? I left, I left, I left, oh, you're at 17, all, 17. 17, okay, <laughs> there, there it is, okay. And he finished all his work on the sixth day, all that is in the heavens and on the earth and in the seas and in the abysses and in the light and in the darkness and in everything. And he gave us a great sign, the Sabbath, that we should work six days, but guard the Sabbath on the seventh day from all work. And all the angels of the presence and all the angels of sanctification, these two great classes, he has bidden us to guard the Sabbath with him in heaven and on earth. And he said unto us, Behold, I will separate unto myself a people from among all peoples, and these shall guard the Sabbath. And I will sanctify them unto myself as my people, and will bless them, and I have sanctified the Sabbath, and do sanctify it unto myself. Even so will I bless them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their Elohim. I'm going to stop right there because, Bill, you just talked about that today uh, or yesterday. One of the days you talked to me, we was talking about that. And I think it's important we talk about this because, um, you know, Bill brought it up. Uh, uh, brought it up. He said uh, that uh, according to this book, and what we just read here, the Sabbath day was only established for his people. That was what it was established for. It was supposed to be just his people. But... What I told Bill was that contract, even though it was originally set for his people, that contract has now been negated and broken because now the Sabbath can be, it should be honored by anybody that is obeying his commandments and keeping his commandments because he divorced his people. So that no longer applies that the Sabbath only applies to his people. But originally, it was only for his people. Is that fair to say, gentlemen? Yeah, so yeah, I, th I think it's... Go ahead, Bill. Right, I'm sorry. No, you go ahead, Bill. I, th I think it's fair to say, um, because that did happen. And, um, you know, he did divorce his people because of the disobedience. We read that um uh throughout different parts of the scripture and you know like i said we go into joel and joel tells how he is going to make himself uh known to another people that are going to accept him that never even heard of him and he's going to be uh, uh an elohim to those people and they're going to accept him and they're going to keep his ways and and believe in him and follow him so we we see the um I don't know, I guess you could say the evolution of his of his grace and of his mercy starting to be spread out to the rest of the nations. Yes. Aaron, what did you have to say? Um, so this, yeah, I, I was just basically agreeing with your sum summation. Um, yeah, it was definitely for his people. But that Sabbath is the way, one way, that people would recognize who is the most highest people. 
So like you were recognized by being a Sabbath keeper for sure, because that's a sign that only referred to the most high. And so I think it was important. It says, and I think you pointed this out to me before Kimball, um, that they, that Sabbath is on heaven and earth. That's right. That's on right. heaven and earth. That's that, that kind of blew my mind. I never really put that in perspective to one of you gentlemen brought that to my attention, but yes. Yeah. It's super, super powerful, man. So, um, and then the next line, which we haven't got there, I'm gonna have to stop you soon, but yeah, but I do agree with you on the, on the summation for the, uh, Sabbath. Yeah, because I mean, it, it, it completely debunks the whole Hebrew Israelite camp, uh, theory that this, gospel is only set aside for his people it, I, I, that's why i think it's important to discuss that because we can get into a place where we think that this is only set aside for a certain people and that deal is no longer on the table this was in we got to remember if we're going to accept this book in my opinion this book appears before there was ever even an israelite people mm-hmm so, you know, it, although it was originally our day and only us that were supposed to honor it, well, we broke that contract. So just like we're supposed to honor it, anybody else, Bill can honor it, uh, uh, John Chong, Chong can honor it, whoever it may be, if they honor and obey his commandments, this part that says it was just for us is no longer applicable. Yeah. Okay. And he, then he goes in verse 21, he says, And I have chosen the seed of Jacob from amongst all that I have seen, and have written him down as my firstborn son, and have sanctified. Stop uh, there. I got a question. I got Stop a question. There. I, yes, yes, sir. Uh, my question is now, okay, here's my question. Now, why is the Most High addressing Jacob as the firstborn here when we know that truthfully Esau was born first? Or Esau, well, well not, not, not born first, but then he wasn't it some trickery that went on in the womb with these two brothers? Didn't one grab the heel and supposed to? Well, 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 let's let's put this in perspective. Damn, can you help me with that? <laughs> so, 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 okay. So, there's there's a couple things here. Um, there's a couple things here, right? So, the Most High had already gave a prophetic word to um, Isaac about the sons and who would serve who. And all of that stuff. So the most high chose Jacob. He chose him prior to the womb. And so the, the key to this is we often see in scripture other places about my son, my son. Jacob is considered his son. It doesn't mean Jesus. He clearly says my firstborn son here. Period. And that's Jacob. But when we go oh, back I to... <laughs> yeah, because we see I that see, other I places. Even... Wow. That, you just brought... Man, I didn't even see. That's why I like studying it out with you all, man. Because you can go through and do something yourself so many times and never see that. I never saw that until you just said that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so we do see it in other places. I think it comes up in Psalms. They talk about my 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 firstborn son or my son whom I love or whatever that case may be. We know for a fact from scripture, Jacob. And then they also at times he refers to Israel as well as his son. Um, but none of those son scriptures mean anything about Jesus that we see anywhere. And so, and you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I, no, no, no. I'm, I, I, I'm sorry. I got to do better. And I'm sorry. I got a problem with that. I'm so sorry. Um, no, I, I, I think it's important to point out the fact that all those, like you just said, is mentioned everywhere else and all these other places in the book. This is before all of that. Yeah. 
I mean, we got to think about this for what it is. This is, if we look at this book and view it how it really is, this exists, this time frame of this book is before there was ever anybody else talking about Firstborn Son. Correct. So it was prophetic that the scam was going to happen in the womb. Yeah, yeah. Everything he uh, let me go find it in Genesis. Let me get the exact scripture. We can we got time to do this. Genesis mm -hmm. or let yeah, me see. Fine. Uh, Jacob prophesied to be king. Um, let me see. Let me see here. Um, oh, let me see. Jacob prophecy. That's what I'm Googling real quick. Okay, so two nations in thy womb. Let me find that. Where is this at? And we can look at it in the Sefer. Let me see here. Get here. It's pulling up. Where is? Give me some scriptural points, folks. Uh, oh, let me just Google two nations in your womb. Okay, so we go into Genesis 25, 22. So we can even take a peek here to put this in perspective. Okay, Genesis 25, what'd you say? You have 20, Genesis 25, chapter 22. Chap, you mean 25, no, verse, oh, 20, verse 22? Yep, I'm sorry, 25, 22. Chapter, chapter, oh, chapter, okay, 25, 22, got it. Yep, yep chapter 25, verse 22. And then it, it says, and the children struggled. Uh, let me see here where we got. And then um, let me see. I got Hold it on. On. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yep. And if no, you, you want to read, read it. Oh, okay. No, because so, you, you, you bring the point. Okay. Yep. So 22. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to acquire of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said unto her, two nations are in your womb, two manner of people shall be separated from your generation, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So the prophecy was always that the older would uh, serve the younger. And then it goes on to say, and her days to be delivered were fulfilled. Behold, there were two twins in a room. The first came out red, all hairy like a garment, called him Esau. And then after that, uh, after his brother, after his brother, uh, after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. And his name was called Yaakov Jacob, and Isaac was three score years old when she bore them. And then so 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 go ahead. So so that's what I'm saying. Isn't that a scam? Because Esau would have technically been the firstborn boy. Yeah, well regardless, well e no Esau was still the firstborn. Esau came out first. Isaac right, still came we, out but, second. But we just but we just read the most high just said that Jacob is his firstborn son. No, yeah, but he, yeah, so, yeah, firstborn son, but Esau, he don't really consider him his son because that nation where Esau, Edomites, Rome went to, that wasn't his people per se. Now, the promise came down from Abraham to Isaac and it did not go to the firstborn as normal, Esau. It went to the secondborn, Jacob. But all of that to me was just part of the prophetic piece where the Most High was telling, you know, um, Rebecca, that your younger son is going to serve. I mean, your, your older son is going to serve your younger son. You know, that was just prophetic. And then that actually came to pass, as we know. Uh, from later readings that that did come to pass where the, the Edomites or Esau and there's people were under control of uh, the uh, 
the Hebrew lineage or yeah, well, yeah, it would be Hebrew lineage by then at that point. So, and then okay. you look at verse 28, Isaac loved Esau, <laughs> you know, Isaac loved Esau, but Rebecca yeah. loved Jacob. And then you remember who most high tell he didn't go tell uh, uh Isaac I mean he didn't go tell uh uh Isaac he went in he had a conversation with Rebecca about what the future yes. of those boys held yes he did, he did. yes because Isaac was blind yeah but Isaac you know his firstborn you know you know all the stuff that happened between them with the birthrights yep. and the blessings yep. so yep. Isaac was all about his firstborn son because that was the natural order and you know those are the way things normally happen but the most high had a different story because he knows the beginning from the end okay okay bill you have anything to say uh boss uh no no but i'm certainly going to be uh looking into that a little bit more so i just made myself a note about that i got i got this research that a little more okay 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 all right so where do we leave off in chapter two gentlemen you remember uh, we were, we were in chapter three. Uh, no, we were still in chapter two. Keep going down. We were looking at Isaac and Esau. Break 20. Oh, yeah, we were in 20, 22. 22? Yeah, we 22? were in 22. Just where we talked about. Oh, we just finished with 21, where we talked about okay. Isaac was his firstborn or Jacob was his firstborn. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right, verse 22, and thus he created therein a sign in accordance with which they should guard the Sabbath with us on the seventh day to eat and to drink and to bless him who has created all things as he has blessed and sanctified unto himself a peculiar people above all peoples and that they should guard the Sabbath together with us. Mm -hmm. Who do you think the is there? The ho heavenly host that are still guarding the Sabbath, the angels of presence, the angels of uh, sanctification, uh, Uriel, Gabriel, all of the host of heaven. Okay, because yeah, the, the Sabbath was uh, was kept in the heavens um, among the angels among before before it was even given to us, before it was mm -hmm. even given to man, the, the mm -hmm. Sabbath existed in the heavens. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even Adam and Eve honored the Sabbath. So, yeah, you're right. All right. And he caused his commands to ascend as a sweet savor acceptable before him all the days. There were two and twenty heads of mankind from Adam to Jacob. And two and twenty kinds of work were made until the seventh day. This is blessed and holy. And the former also is blessed and holy. And this one serves with that one for sanctification and blessing. And to this Jacob and his seed, it was granted that they should always be be the blessed and holy, what was that word? Uh, holy men. Saints. Yeah, holy men are saints. Saints of the first testimony and Torah, even as he had sanctified and blessed the Sabbath on the seventh day. He created heaven and earth and everything that he created in six days. And Yahuwah made the seventh day holy for all his works. Therefore, he commanded on its behalf that whosoever does any work thereon shall die. Kill him. That he, that's right. <laughs> and that he who defiles it shall surely die. Wherefore, do you command the children of Israel to observe this day that they may keep it holy and not do thereon any work and not to defile it as it is holier than all days? Holier than who, all other days, the Sabbath, the 52 and, holidays per year, holier than and, and, all other days. And I think it's important to point that out because, again, people that say it, it's not important, it doesn't matter, that doesn't make any sense to me because everywhere we read here, he's talking about the punishment of what will happen if you do not honor it. So the fact that we know the Catholic Church changed the Sabbath day, there's evidence, it can be looked up, everybody can see it just by one quick Google search, then the reality of it is the Sabbath day was changed and it was never supposed to be. 
Yep, and the and the Catholics decided to call it the Lord's Day instead because that's the day that they decide that they want to worship and and do whatever. So they gave this day unto the Lord Sunday, but that's not the Sabbath. And then on top of that, the Lord means Baal in the Hebrew. So, you know, once again, it's a complete scam when they yep. messed with something that the Most High completely said, whoever profanes it shall surely die. Whoever, so you're profaning it because you changed it in worship to another another deity, not yep. the Most High Yah. All right, verse 29. And everyone who observes it, and guards the Sabbath thereon from all his work will be holy and blessed throughout all his days like unto us. Declare and say to the children of Israel, the Torah of this day, both that they should guard the Sabbath thereon and that they should not forsake it in error of their hearts and that it is against the Torah to do any work thereon, which is unseemly. Now, I got to stop right there, gentlemen, because I was a little stuck on that a little bit. I couldn't really understand what he meant there. What did he mean by unseemly? Well, the, the operative word first is work. So, you know, that's the first work. Now, I would think that it would fall in the category of unseemly would just mean, you know, uh, uh, in, in, improper so it can't be anything improper so when you put that in perspective it's like i don't want to use the, the 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 if your if your lamb falls in a ditch or your your animal falls in a ditch would you pull it out that wouldn't be unseemly work yes it's labor but it's not unseemly work you ain't gonna let the animal stay in there but you go set up at the meat market for today that work is unseen. That's a different story. That's that's the way that I take it. Yeah, so, or if your roof caves in from from the rains or whatever is going on, you got to do something about it right there on the spot. Um, you're just left with no choice. That's not unseemly. Yeah, that's I'm, with I, I'm still I'm, I'm still stuck on that, gentlemen. You got y'all have to give it to me again, like I'm a two year old, because because well, just the, the way Google, I Google, the way I'm Google seeing unseemly. That, well, I mean, I, I Googled unseemly before. Unseemly, when, when I looked at this before, let me, let me, I should have pulled up my notes. Yeah, I'm just sorry. take a look again. And it just put it all I mean, in perspective for you. Yeah, because, yeah, um, yeah, this is, the, that part is still, still, is, I'm still, um, not proper or appropriate. So mm -hmm. when he says, any work which is unseemly, so what would be considered seemly? So, Just once me. again, go ahead, oh, go ahead, Bill. Okay, so, so like Terrence had said, if you got to pull your lamb or your animal out of a ditch, that's that's seemly, that's sensible. You're saving the life of something. That's it's that's not really considered a, a work for profit or. A, I, I think that that's I think that's what he's you know really trying to see. you're going out and you're doing work that you don't have to do that's anything so any so would it be fair to just say anything that you're trying to do that's considered making profit is considered work that would be unseemly no yeah no, no. yeah I profit means, for sure no, will be unseemly yeah profit will be unseemly but to go do any work that you don't have to do that can wait yeah. until tomorrow yeah cooking cooking. You decide it's the Sabbath. I'm hungry. I'm gonna go prepare me seven course meal. You're out of bounds, bro. You ain't got to do all that. Fast till tomorrow. That's that would got be it. unseemly, you know. Got it. Got it. But but you should not be working in any shape, form, or fashion receiving a profit whatsoever. No, I think that would be a violation. Okay, it is. A, yeah, that's what I'm trying to get at. If, if there's no way it couldn't be. Because if if it because it work the definition of work is working in response of getting some type of a paycheck. Yeah. Reward for it. Got it. Got it. All right. And they shall not bring in nor take out from house to house on that day, for that day is more holy and blessed than any Jubilee day of the Jubilees. On this we kept Sabbath in the heavens before it was made known to any flesh. To guard the Sabbath thereon on the earth. There it is. And the creator of all things blessed it. 
but he did not sanctify all peoples and nations to guard the Sabbath thereon, but Israel alone. Them alone he permitted to eat and drink and to guard the Sabbath thereon on the earth. And the creator of all things blessed this day which he had created for blessing and holiness and glory above all days. This Torah and testimony was given to the children of Israel as a Torah forever unto their generations. Forever. Forever. That's right. Forever. Forever. That's right. Forever. Now, now, Bill, you the other day and I were talking with Pope about this. Can you refresh my memory one more time of what you said the definition of forever is? Because I believe in what Terrence just said. Forever means forever. No matter how you cut the pie, no matter where you slice the pie at. But you said that forever means until, can you re, I don't even want to butcher what you said. Can you re-say to what, explain what you said about forever, please? In, in some instances, forever can just refer to a timeline until a timeline comes to an end. That is forever. Once that timeline is ended, we're into a new timeline. But if you read things and it says that he's going to do this forever for his people, well, then if he divorced his people and that's not happening anymore, then where did forever go? Forever went somewhere. Forever is now no longer on the books. So how is it? How um, is it? How is it not on the books? Because the people chose not to do it anymore. Yeah, yeah, they chose not to do it anymore. So the covenant is now, you know, uh, it is it's now broken, obviously. But um, I mean, didn't didn't he say that when when he comes, he's going to gather his people to Jerusalem? They're going to be gathered to the Holy Land once again. But if they're cut off from the Holy Land forever because of their disobedience, how could they be gathered back in there? Well, that's until his coming, which ends that forever timeline. That's just my interpretation of it. I could very well be wrong, but at some point he's going to gather his people back to the land once again when he comes. For what? For for what reason? Yeah, why is he gathering them? Oh, I to to be honest with you, I do not know exactly the reason for the gathering, but I know that they were cut off from the land because of their disobedience and that was supposed to be forever but they're going to be gathered there again so they can't be forever not at least in our interpretation of what forever means well if, if you don't mind I'm, I'm gonna throw something in there well, the reason where here's where i go with forever what forever means to me because we've all established or we're and we're starting to establish the biblical races of the bible and we're and this is not to offend anybody or make anybody upset, but this is just the honest truth. We figured out that dirt has always been the same color since day one. And so to me, what forever means, he told us as a people that we were going to be exactly what Deuteronomy 28 spells out. And so when we look at our people as a race today, Everything that he said was going to come to pass has happened outside of his descending yet. But the curses that were pronounced on his people, nobody can argue that that is still not happening to today. So how can that not be forever? You know, so, so I, I so so the covenant breaking that we've discussed, there's implications for breaking that covenant. There's implications for those that break that covenant. So we got to remember that. But he never said that since half these Negroes or 90% of these Negroes didn't keep the covenant that the other 10% of you Negroes ain't got to keep it no more. So the covenant to me is only broke by those that broke the covenant. And then so for me to be able to stay in right standings with the most high, then I need to keep the covenant regardless of Marquise, keep it, Bill, keep it, my wife, keep it. I need to, because I ain't a covenant. I don't want to be a covenant breaker. I want to be in the right standings with the most high. And so to me, 
even though Israel as a whole broke the covenant, they got dispersed. That's the only thing they lost was the land that they were on. That's it. They lost the land. Now, that's Israel as a whole nation. They lost the land. He scattered them. But it's still his people. He even said, if my people who are called by my name, <laughs> you know, he, he's always been that way where even after he scattered them, think about it, folks. They were in captivity by the Philistines, by the Armenians, the Babylonians, just to name a few. And the Most High even still brought them, the North and the South, up out of bondage, let them rebuild the temple again. Same people, same covenant, same sacrificial laws. Like nothing changed. Even after they blew it, they got scattered. He brings them back again. And the last time he brought them back, they did the same stuff, wind up being conquered. Now, when we come back to the land bill, that's for judgment. So he's bringing us right. to the Valley of Jehoshaphat for judgment. He's gathering all right. nations. All nations. That's for judgment. And then That's we right. just read he's going to tabernacle with his people. How is he going to tabernacle if he ain't got no people because he killed the covenant and you ain't my people no more? No, the disobedient covenant breakers, that's different than a person that is truly still trying to follow the covenant. So a person that is just thinking that they are going to make it in just because they are Hebrew Israelite or just because they got up and said a few hukamashahs don't mean absolutely nothing to the Most High because it comes down to you obeying and keeping the covenant. Period. Period. Yep, Period. I feel, I feel that. I feel that. That, that. That's why he's been so adamant about his laws and his commandments. And he said, he, from the beginning, he told Moses in verse, in chapter one, everybody's going to forget. Everybody's going to forget. He ain't say that, oh, I'm going to end it because people ain't going to do it. He said, everybody's going to forget. But that forgetting has been part of the process of the whitewashing and the changing. You know, we're going to help you forget. We're going to burn your Bibles. We're going to change the language from that you can't even read it. We're going to put you, we're going to, force you not to say, yeah, we're going to force you mm -hmm. to do this. You're going to fall in line. And then generations and generations. Look, we didn't even know the name of Yah until I was in my forties. Me neither. So Me neither. I mean, I mean, I was <laughs> serving Jesus my whole life. That's what I'm saying. My mom never gave, told me nothing about Yah. And so like what the most high said, they're going to forget. They're going to forget my laws, my commandments and who I am. And he was right. That's yeah. exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, you, you guys ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Let's see here. Um, all right. Um, and so we're going to continue here. Chapter three. And on the sixth day of the second week, we, we brought, according to the word of Yahuwah, unto Adam all the beasts and all the cattle and all the birds and everything that moves on the earth. And everything that moves in the water according to their kinds and according to their types, the beast on the first day, the cattle on the second day, the birds on the third day, and all that which moves on the earth on the fourth day, and that which moves in the water on the fifth day. And Adam named them all by their respective names, and as he called them, so was their name. This is all done before Eve was created. And on these five days, Adam saw all these, male and female, according to every kind that, that was on the earth, but he was alone and found no help meet for him. And Yahweh said unto us, it is not good that a man should be alone. Let us make a help meet for him. And Yahuwah caused a deep sleep to fall upon him and he slept and he took for the woman one rib from amongst his ribs and this rib was the origin of the woman from amongst his ribs. And he built up the flesh in its stead and built the woman. And he awakened Adam out of his sleep. And on the awakening, he rose on the sixth day and he brought her to him. And he knew her and said unto her, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. 
she shall be called my woman because she was taken from her man. It's very important. I want to stop right there. Um, we we often think that, or we, I was always told that anywhere you see this term that they knew someone that that is representing sexual innuendo between the, the husband and the wife. That's not what this is representing here. Just so we all understand each other, it does not represent these two coming together sexually in that verse. So what could he knew her mean? Can you hear me? Yeah, you said you I don't think you. it was. You don't. I, you, you I, I, asked you, I asked you guys a question. Can you help me out with that? What I'm saying is, is he knew her normally means that they had sexual intercourse. That's what it means. Everywhere we look at it in the 66, no matter where you look it up at, every time that is mentioned, it represents the husband and the wife coming together. Right here. It is not representing that because it's disclosed as we continue to read that they did not come together until the birth of their first son. So what could he knew her mean right there is what I'm asking you to. Um, you know, I so I would I don't know. I don't I don't I don't know where that where that comes up. It just says he knew her. Um, and he said unto her, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. I don't know that that's a good question. I would have thought that that meant they had sexual relationships right there. Um, no, sir. Just look, I'm look, I'm look, I'll, keep re I'll, keep, I'll keep reading it so I can show you what I mean. Yeah. But now this is a, and this too, remember is a summary. It's not like line for line by events of exactly how everything happened. Because if you remember, we started in chapter one and they was talking about uh, a Moses. Now we all the way in chapter three and they're talking about uh, Adam and Eve. <laughs> so it's kind of just well, a, a, well, sum a summary in well, some way, shape, form or fashion. But let's rock. Well, I don't believe it's a summary in my opinion. I, I have to disagree with you there. I believe it is exactly what it is, because what it looks like to me is Moses is still getting information. So what, what we're seeing it from the eye of. We're seeing it from the eye of we know Genesis, so it's easy for us to think it's a summary. But I believe that we've got to look at this from the eyes of Moses receiving what to write down in Genesis is what I'm saying. I mean, what it mean there? If it don't mean that, what it mean? You tell us. If he ain't asked what answer, I'm, just tell us what it means. No, that, 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 that's, that, that's what I'm saying. I, well, I'll, I'll prove to you what that it doesn't mean that because we're going no, to continue. Just, I, I, just, just tell me what it means. I, I, if it don't I, mean that, I, do, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you to. I don't know. I'm asking okay. you what could it mean if it doesn't mean that. Yeah, I mean, no, you, you've had an opportunity to look at this and knew this didn't mean that, but uh, haven't got to the conclusion of what it means. But yeah, I don't know what it means. Okay. I don't, okay. I, don't I just thought either. maybe, yeah, I just, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd ask you all because I don't know. Because now we continue here. He says, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken from her man. Therefore shall man and woman be one. And therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his woman. and They shall be one flesh. In the first week was Adam created and the rib his woman in the second week. He showed her unto him, and for this reason the commandment was given to keep in their defilement for a male seven days and for a female twice seven days. And after Adam had completed 40 days in the land where he had been created, we brought him into the Garden of Eden to till the guard and guard it. But his woman they brought in on the 80th day. And after this, she entered into the Garden of Eden. And for this reason, the commandment is written on the heavenly tablets in regard to that gives birth. If she bears a male, she shall remain in her uncleanliness seven days according to the first week of days and 30 and three days shall she remain in the blood of her purifying 
and she shall not touch any sanctified thing nor enter into the sanctuary until she accomplishes these days, which are enjoined in the case of a male child. But in the case of a female child, she shall remain in her uncleanliness two weeks of days, according to the first two weeks and 66 days in the blood of her purification, and they will be in all 80 days. And when she had completed these 80 days, we brought her into the Garden of Eden, for it is holier than all the earth besides and every tree that is planted in it is holy. Therefore, there was ordained regarding her who bears a male or a female child, the statue of those days that she should touch no sanctified thing nor enter into the sanctuary until these days for the male or female child are accomplished. This is the Torah and the testimony which was written down for Israel in order that they should observe all the days, all the days. And in the first week of the first Jubilee, Adam and his woman were in the Garden of Eden for seven years, tilling and guarding it. And we gave him work and we instructed him to uh, do everything that is suitable for tillage. And he tilled the garden and was naked and knew it not, was not ashamed. He protected the garden from the birds and the beasts and the cattle and gathered its fruit and ate, put aside the remnant for himself and for his woman. He put aside that which was being kept. And after the completion of the seven years, which he had completed there seven years exactly, and in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, the serpent came and approached the woman. The serpent said unto the woman, has Yahuwah commanded you, saying you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And she said to it of all the fruit of the trees of the garden, Yahuwah has said unto us, eat but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. Yahuwah has said unto us, you shall not eat thereof. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for Yahuwah knows that on the day you shall eat thereof, your eyes will be open, and you will be as Elohim, and you will know good and evil. And the woman saw the tree, that it was agreeable and pleasant to the eye, and that its fruit was good for food. And she took thereof and ate. When she had covered her, first covered her shame with fig leaves, she gave thereof to Adam, and he ate. And his eyes were open, and he saw that he was naked. He took fig leaves and sewed them together and made an apron for himself and covered his shame. And Yahuwah cursed the serpent and was wroth with it forever. And he was wroth with the woman because she hearkened to the voice of the serpent and did eat. And he said unto her, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your pains and sorrow. You shall bring forth children and you re your return shall be unto your man and he will rule over you. And to Adam also he said, because you have hearkened unto the voice of your woman and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you that you should eat not, that eat, not eat thereof. Curse be the ground for your sake. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to you and you shall eat your bread in the sweat of your face till you return to the earth from which you were taken for earth you are and unto earth shall you return. And he made for them coats of skin, and he clothed them and sent them forth from the Garden of Eden. And on that day on which Adam went forth from the garden, he offered a sweet savor of offering frankincense, galbanum, statue, spices in the morning with the rising of the sun from the day when he covered his shame. And on that day was closed the mouths of all beasts and all cattle and birds and whatsoever walks and whatsoever moves so that they could no longer speak. Very important we look at that. The animals were all speaking at one point. For they had all spoken with one with another, with one lip and with one tongue. And he sent out of the Garden of Eden all flesh that was in the Garden of Eden, and all flesh was scattered according to its kinds, according to its types, and to the places which had been created for them. And to Adam alone did he give the wherewithal to cover his shame of all the beasts and cattle. On this account, it is described on heavenly tablets as touching all those who know the judgment of the Torah, that they should cover their shame and should not uncover themselves as the other nations uncover themselves. And on the new moon of the fourth month, Adam and his woman went forth from the Garden of Eden, and they dwelt in the land of Elda in the land of their creation. And Adam called the name of his woman Shua, and they had no son till the first jubilee. So unless there was some type of a condom created that I don't know about, this is where I get what I was just trying to say earlier. 
if they if it meant that they knew each other earlier, then there is no way that down here we see it's clear that they had no son. So how could they have had sex until they left the garden? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, That's so so I'm still where I was at earlier, <laughs> where <laughs> this is and a summary is probably not the right word, but let me just say the sequence and order of events, the way that they write them in Jubilees, just because you read this first in, in, in Jubilees one doesn't mean it happened before what you read in Jubilees three is what I was saying. Now, as I, far I, as, I, I can receive it. Yeah, that's all I was saying. And so, like that little script right there, um, we know that, that he that, eventually knew her. Now, what that means there, couldn't tell you unless he was yeah. talking about at the point in time that he actually knew her. Well, see, what I, what I, what I, and this could be me again stepping out there on faith, like they call it in the church. <laughs> I'm going to step out there and that could be wrong. But the, what I am reading here, is there, first of all, there was no need for sexual intercourse before sin, or else the Bible would not keep pointing out the fact about the nakedness of the unshamedness. So I believe personally that after sin crept in, that was when sex was triggered. Because if we look here, it's pretty clear, even if we want to bounce it around and it's summarized and it goes a different spot, no matter where you put it, you cannot remove. They had no son. Agreed. To the first Jubilee. Agreed. So I'm going to study that out some more and see if I can come up with some kind of a understanding of what that means, because I'm still stuck on it. That's why I wanted to ask you all and when we went through it today to see if you guys had any idea. So okay, thing, I am fixed. Uh, go yep. ahead. Yep. So we we um one thing we have to look at is we'll have to go back and look specifically in that lexicon and see exactly what word they used there. So if we can scroll okay. back up to that verse. Okay. Let me see here. Bill, yeah, you got your, your your blue letter Bible close where you can look up the Hebrew word of this particular that they used in there. For which word are you looking for? It says knew her. I'm going to get the exact verse. And if you can pull it up in that that uh blue letter Bible where we look at the the Hebrew breakdown. Where was that at? That was way early on. Um yeah, it's like chapter or uh, verse five or six. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. Six. Six. So if you can look up that exact verse in the blue letter Bible and see exactly what the original Hebrew word was used there, then we can look at the variations because um, the Sefer publishing um, may have chosen that word right there for Jubilees. But I want to know what that is there if you can find that. Please. Just give me just just give me a moment. Take your time, sir. Jubilee six. Copy. And I'm going to look into.
I'm just not finding anything that coordinates with Jubilees as far as um, the Hebrew word goes. Um, Can you grab it from Genesis? Because uh, it's pretty much used in Genesis too. Then we can drill down on it from Genesis. Because it also obviously is pretty much a very similar quote to Genesis 2.20. Let me see here. Let me go get it in Genesis. Oh, it's Genesis 4, 1 through 8. Let me get here. Let me see. Genesis 4, 1. So if you go to Genesis 4, 1, and Adam knew Shua, and if you can drill down off of that new right there to see what all the different combinations of new are, and then we can see what else they use that word specifically for. Let me see here. so far yada is what i'm uh coming up with but i i'm looking for the um it like has a lot of different meanings mm -hmm. okay yeah so so the word uh yada is referring to uh mean um sexual intercourse um to know uh, that that word yada means that it also means to have deep intimate knowledge of something. Um, it also is applicable in that as well. So I think it just has to mean um, uh, intimacy of some sort. Yeah, and well, I, I I can receive that. I just can't believe it's physical when it, comes, it clearly says that they didn't have a son until at that point when they left the garden. They couldn't have had sex. Unless they were having sex and somehow she didn't get pregnant. Well, it could mean it, it could mean to uh he may have conversed with her. He may have may have had a, a deep conversation with her, got to know her. Uh that also is what Yada means, an intimate uh connection that you have with somebody. But it just uh, or it could could it possibly mean he knew her because she came from him? I mean, he. If, 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 if you're, you're taking something out of my body, it's a part of me. So is that his way of saying I know her because she's part of me? But the physical sexual act could not have taken place if it's clear that they didn't have a son until they left the garden. Unless she didn't, unless unless they had sex and she didn't get pregnant, I mean, that's what I, that's where I'm at. Either he was he wasn't pulling out, was it? What? So I mean, what what happened here? Is, is somebody has to help me out with this? Like I'm a two year old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we really we really don't know, we, and it and it uh you know we don't know. We we just we don't know. I don't think it necessarily. Um, um, means anything either way it, or it, doesn't, it really doesn't mean anything but it's just i'm still stuck on it and i just thought you know we we study it out this is what we do we go back and forth and we figure it out oh, yeah. we face to face and it's no different when we just virtual i need my brothers to help me out because i can't understand it <laughs> yeah it could be just a uh uh an intimate knowing you know uh, like i said a conversation a uh uh Maybe a, a a falling in love moment, so to speak. 
that could also be associated with Yada. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've Sounds already made good. you host, so whenever you're ready. Yeah, hey, I got to oh, wrap oh. it up, gentlemen. I was expecting an hour, so I got to go. Even if you guys are going to continue on tonight, um, that's fine, and I'll catch my chapter on the next time, but I'm an hour and a half in, and I got to run. Got it. Okay, brother. Be safe, man, and take care. Thanks for uh, uh, studying with us tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then, uh, honestly, you don't want to make the content too long. You know how, like, when you go to church for two or three hours, people don't like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, they want, to get, they want in and out. And so we have an hour and a half, so we want to respect the listeners that will try to get all of this information. And realistically, what we should do is just make this a three-part series. You know how the pastor be like, I'm going to have to do this in multiple parts. Well, this is so yeah. much information. We can't cover nine chapters in one hour. We just can't. And so well, we well, should take it. Well, Go ahead. I'm sorry. One thing, though, you know, uh, maybe it's, it's not that important to you all, but see, like right now, I've got 14 people watching us live and it's been changing the entire time. So when, when like, what, like the live audiences, there's people that are watching us live that are just chiming in when we're talking about subjects. So I don't think it's, you know, they're, they're, we got to remember the live audiences too um, mm -hmm. that, that are on. So maybe we schedule it. it out and we and we schedule it out because, like I said, we do have a live audience, even though it's not on you guys' platforms. I'm live on every single platform that I have. Okay. Yeah. So well, we have you, people watching. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. But yeah, if, if you guys want to continue, I will have to gracefully bow out, but I'll be happy to pick mine up next week if you guys go ahead and continue. Um, but I do have okay. to get off myself personally. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, okay, gentlemen. Brother. Appreciate it. It was great. Yep. Yes, sir. You. Thank you very much. Yep. All righty, brother. Bless you. Yep. Love you too, yep. man. Peace. Love you too. Yep. Peace. All right, brother. You want to go ahead and pick up? You don't. You, you got enough strength to get to your three.